This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. When it's game day for your health coverage, trust Farm Bureau Health Plans to drop the winning play. They've been backing Tennesseans for over 77 years. With Amy Wells and the ever-reliable Rhett Bryan from Titans Radio, I'm Mike Keith. This is the OTP 4D, the final OTP 4D of the preseason 2024. Titans finished 3-0 and in the preseason. First undefeated preseason in 21 years. It's very exciting. Is it? Well, sure. Is it very exciting or is it just exciting? It's pretty exciting. Or is it mildly exciting? No, I think it's pretty exciting. I think it's great. Well, I mean, it's good. It's better than bad. Yeah, I'd rather win it, than lose. Well, sure. I think it's cool, but I think it's time to switch gears now to regular season. Well, here's what I remember. Okay, you're going to say something. No, you go. No, you go no, first. No. Go ahead. I want to clarify my position because I am not saying we are going to the Super Bowl because we won three preseason games. I do not believe that to be true. Okay. I do still think it's nice. I think it's potentially a tone setter. Yeah. And, and here's what I remember about this, and Rhett will remember it too. 2008, we go down to play Atlanta in the preseason. Mike Smith has taken over as the head coach of the Falcons. And they played that preseason game with as much of an edge of any team you've ever seen. There were near fights. There may have been Very a fight. Chippy. You got the sense when you left there that night that they were just trying to get something across. Not to the Titans, to themselves. And I think they set a tone. And some teams, when they're new, as this team is, new staff, new system, a lot of new players, you can set a bit of a tone. You can say, this is what we want to be like. The Titans won two preseason games in the last, you know, couple of minutes of the game. They played hard. They did some good things on special teams. And, and I mean, I think that's what this is all about. Now, you could have done that at two and one. You could have done it at one and two. But at three and oh, the feeling in the locker room is, is that it gives you something to potentially set the tone for who you want to be. And again, the, the, the Falcons didn't win the Super Bowl in 2008, but they were improved. They were an improved team. If I'm not mistaken, they made the playoffs. But the point being, I think that's what the Titans were trying to do with the preseason, Red. I think not only that, but I think about the things that Coach Brian Callahan shared with you on the Brian Callahan Show, Monday, 6 Central, 7 Eastern on Titans Radio. Good job, Brett. And, and also, you know, in, in Titans Radio spaces like the, our network post game, is that they wanted to knock the new off of this in terms of the operation right. of the offense and just all three phases, really, because this is his turn now as a head coach. Yes, he's been around NFL teams for years as an assistant and coordinator. But, you know, I think that the tone is correct. But, you know, there's a couple of main reasons for this. And I think that's the other one. Well, and it, for Coach Callahan, it gives him a ton of credibility. It backs up the this is what we preach. This is why we do what we do. This is what our our philosophy is going to be, what our procedures are going to be. It, for all of the things that he is setting up as a new head coach, this all of a sudden says, and here's why we do it this way. Right. Guys need to see the proof of why we do things a certain way. And now you can say, we do this a certain way because it translates to wins on the field. Whether or not the wins matter or not isn't necessarily the point. It's it's showing that there is success associated with the things that we are doing. And they had a lot of situations that came up in the three preseason games that you can say the communication was good, the execution was good, they were able to study some things offensively and defensively. I mean, even the, the field goal that was short, that was returned 106 yards by Samson Nakua, Thomas Odekoya's hustle, Nicholas Petit Frere's hustle, good things, and obviously a coaching point that you're always going to have. But, but also just to remind them, that's a live ball. Mm -hmm. that, that's a situation where you were three, three yards away from having a kick six 
you've always got to make sure you're hustling in those instances for that very reason, Red. No, and, and you're right, because situationally, um, enough things come up, and, uh, and obviously this was the dress rehearsal, if you will, because so many of the starters started the thing out. But yeah, this is it before Chicago week one. So, you know, it's one thing to teach it on the practice field here, and, and another to, you know, simulate that in a game type setting. But yeah, you, there's teachable moments in all of this. Um, I think top to bottom, I think Brian Callahan got a lot of what he wanted out of this whole I thing. I think you're right. Uh, certainly there are things to correct, there always are, but. Um, we bet you want it. Right, and, it's, I mean, and it's not necessarily tied to wins and losses no. in this. But to win and to be in those situations, I think we can all agree nobody's jumping up and down. Nobody has changed their prediction for what the season is going no. to be, nor should you. I mean, whatever you're picking the Titans, you shouldn't change your prediction. But is it a better sign than not? Sure. I'm I mean, never going to turn my nose up at a win. No, ever. I don't care whether it counts or not. Right. It's a win. All right. So, in Brian Callahan's Monday press conference, linebacker Chance Campbell lost for the year with an ACL. Awful. I hate it. Mm -hmm. Yep. God, I hate he it. He was going to make the roster, too. Yeah. Know that. Absolutely. <sighs> so, they, I mean, when you, when you look at the Titans at this point, you can make the case that the three players they've lost that are out there right now, Marlon Davidson probably makes the roster. Garrett Wallow, the way he was playing yep. mm -hmm. and was rotating in, probably makes the roster. Chance Campbell would have made the roster. Yeah. So that opens spots for, for three people. Again, not guaranteed on the first two. I think Chance Campbell was making the 53. I think he had given himself a spot with the way he played. You're sick about it. Yeah. The other thing that comes out of the press conference is the starting offensive line is set. And left to right, it's going to be J.C. Latham, Peter Skaronsky, Lloyd Cushenberry, Dylan Radins, and Nicholas petit Frere. No real surprise. Those had been the consistent guys. And they showed it Sunday in New Orleans again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a unit. And here we go. Yeah, and I think when you consider how much of that has changed year over year, <laughs> Um, which is, you know, totally, totally changed for the most part. Um, I think you feel better about it. I think you, Chicago's going to be a tough test. Chicago is a team that has built themselves. Ryan Poles has put that thing together to start winning and setting Caleb Williams, the number one pickup for success. It's going to be a real test. But I think they showed enough in the areas where they needed it in those couple of series um, and, and we'll get into this in four downs, but th there's some good positive stuff there. Well, Skaronsky was the only week one starter who will be a week one That's starter. It. But remember, then he missed three games with the appendectomy. Yep. So <laughs> there are five new starters from the end of September 2024 because Skaronsky was out during that period of time. So let's stop doing that. Yeah. Let's just keep these five together, and hopefully we've got something that can be solid and that can last injuries you just don't know about. Four downs from the final preseason game, a 30-27 to 27 win in New Orleans. Player of the game, Rep. Bryan. It's Ryan Stonehouse for me, and for a couple of reasons. It had been, Mike, 266 days since he punted in a game. December the 3rd was when he got hurt. And the guy has, n n not unlike anybody else who's been through these, the dark road of getting back to, uh, you know, playing in a game, but he'd worked his rear end off for almost nine months to make sure that this had happened. And he had to wait till the second half to get his chance. But, you know, two punts, 87 yards, 43 and a half average, 35-5 net. He needed that for a mental rep. And as you described, you know, when you and Mac were calling the game, the, to feel the rush and to get over that part knowing that he's going to need, okay, that's a last box checked. Let's get ready for Chicago. 
My player of the game is all of the tight ends. The tight end group is oh, my the player. Tight ends, not tight all ends. of the titans. No, tight ends. Yes, okay. <laughs> all of the titans. Wouldn't I that you be said, the I ultimate was like, cheat? Wow, that, that is such an Amy Wells move to pick all of the titans. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Do that, you, but you I really didn't. Would. I'll give you 90 answers. No. Uh, she's going to go through the entire roster. No. <laughs> All of the tight ends. All of the tight ends are my player of the game because we have gone, that was really funny. We have gone this entire off season talking almost none about tight ends. We didn't talk about them much during OTAs. We didn't talk about them much when we started training camp in the middle of the training camp and here at the end of the preseason. Finally, we are getting some tight end activity and these guys are showing up and it's not their fault. It is not, they are not the problem. We are the problem. We weren't noticing what we had right in front of us. There were too many other things going on. We should have been looking at these tight ends more because <laughs> in the game, all of a sudden, every play that's being made is being made by a tight end. You've got DMR, David Martin Robinson, who's been making plays. You've got Nick Vanette making plays. We've got Thomas Otakoya sprinting down the field for a thousand yards, it feels like. I wonder how many yards he actually ran. I don't on know. That play. I don't know where he started off. Did you not see that that replay that's been dropped in on social media where he was like at the 15 yard line? And then it looked like, I mean, if it were the United States, he traversed, <laughs> he went through everything. He traversed Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, <laughs> Texas, and then went all the way through New Mexico and Colorado. I and mean, Nevada. I believe it. Had he ended up in Seattle. It's uh, crazy. It, it, it was it was a phenomenal play. I'm going to yeah. say he ran 120 yards. I was going to say I mean, 120 to 100 because yards. you can see where Nicholas Petit Frere is there and he's going and he's taking the correct angle and you can see that inner clock go off, and I'm like wow he really he made yeah. it he knocked him out he did wow. it credit to Brad Willis on Titans radio for having <laughs> it too he spots for us he does a lot of things for us but yeah he spots he had it for us on Titans radio he knew exactly who it was awesome it was crazy that's amazing great play but proud of the tight ends proud of the showing tight ends. up there at the end just making us talk about, forcing us to talk about them. And we will, proudly. My player of the game is Tavondre Sweat. Okay. Uh, showed up early and often, played a bunch of plays in a row, made a difference, capped off what was as good a preseason as I think he could have had. He, he didn't miss a day. Doesn't feel like he missed a play. He's continued to improve. He's ready to start the season with a, a good opportunity to make a difference. Uh, I think that went as well as it could have possibly gone, especially after the fact that he didn't do everything in OTAs and minicamp. Um, and, you know, there were people concerned about his weight and would he be able to hold up. And so far, so good. And we'll see if he can continue to end the regular season. But he has given himself the best chance possible to be a force. And that's what you want out of it. Mike, he did what you described when we began this OTP. He set the tone. He didn't. Because four plays later, it's Titans ball. And, I mean, he's c caving things in. That's right. Like, he's doing what you drafted him for. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, but, yeah, good one. Who or what stood out to you, Amy Wells, uh, as we go to second down? The starting offense. And I feel like every time we've seen them on the field, we talk about it and people just talk about it. Wow, have you seen the Titans offense? It looks fast. It looks exciting. It looks good. I mean, it is balanced with what we've been able to see so far. We know we haven't seen the whole shebang, but it's been balanced. There's been plenty of run and pass, and there's been some deep explosive plays that have been really exciting. It seems like every time those guys are on the field, they are controlling the tempo of the game. They've really got it under control. It's just really exciting to see, and I think that every time we see those starters coming together and we see kind of what Brian Callahan might have up his sleeve – it's exciting, and it feels like that just continues to catch my attention, and I'm excited to see it for an entire game. For me, I think it was the way that Malik Willis bounced back. Had a couple of quarterback sacks that were basically on him to begin when it was his turn, and then two touchdown passes to Bryce Oliver in the fourth quarter. That first one, that's an NFL throw. But I thought, 
You know, what an interesting journey for, for Malik in this. And what an interesting preseason he's had. But didn't start great. Ended really good. For me, it's Shane Ray. 31 years old, hasn't played in the league since 2018, had the sack and the forced fumble. Um, I've watched him quite a bit in practice. He, he's not the same guy he was when he was a first round pick, and yet he's out there battling. He clearly wants to continue to try to, con to keep his career going. Uh, that was a, a Shane Ray move. That was what you saw from early in his career when he played with the Denver Broncos and he had a chance to work with Von Miller and you know th this was a this was a guy who injuries derailed what I think was going to be a really good NFL career he's fought back in camps that he's been in with Buffalo and Baltimore and now Tennessee he tried it in Canada for a while and um, it's just good to see you know so so when you see the wily veteran go out and, and make something happen like that, you're happy that all the work he's been doing paid off in a preseason game. Surprised you. Third down, Amy Wells. What surprised you from the Titans-Saints preseason game on Sunday? Well, all of the things that I was going to say have already been discussed. So really? I'm just going to say kinda... Shane Ray? No, I wasn't going to say Shane Ray. That was a good one by you. Thanks. No, my original thing that, I was going to mention was that the Titans were able to have three victories within the preseason and how rare that is for a team that has so many things that are new, but we've pretty much beat that. So, um, also I was going to talk about Ryan Stonehouse and how impressive it was that he was able to come back from such a catastrophic injury and that there was fear. Yeah. He might had, not ever do it yeah, again. That was feared at that moment that he might not ever play again. Yeah. And he was fortunate because when you have your leg planted the way he did and you take that lick on mm -hmm. December 3rd, um, I mean, that was, that was horrific. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, stunning that he could make it back in nine months and be this effective. Yeah, and be as, as strong and as confident in it. He didn't really seem like he had nerves or just in conversations with him. He didn't seem nervous about going back into a game. He needed to do it, but he seemed really confident in it. So that's another thing. Just his story and his return is so surprising to me. But you guys talked about both of them. Well, so. I mean, steal your thunder. I just, he was my <laughs> sentimental vote so what for is player your, of the what game. So what is your surprise? You don't have one? Well, so I had You're two. surprised that you don't have one? I'm surprised that you guys took both of my surprises. What's your surprise? How well the screen game worked. Ah, That's a good one. Yeah, because we've seen some of it out here on the practice fields, but that's going to be fun. Well, and historically, we've been poor, and that is <laughs> poor at the screen game. And that's yeah. why now we did did do some better things. Um, you know, with Derrick Henry, they did yes. some good screen things at times. They, they certainly had better concepts in the last few years. For many years, really poor. <laughs> Yeah, if, I, I mean, like, yeah, if the Titans had a sponsorship with a home exterior, like screen door person, they wouldn't do a whole lot because screen, <laughs> screen and Titans didn't now, want to go together. Now, here you are, businesses that it is do time. home improvements. It's time for the screen. Uh -huh. you, you got a screen door, screen window uh -huh. company? Hi, I'm Julius Chestnut. I the screen. urge you to get in touch with your Tennessee Titans because it just never was synonymous. It never was. But What about no. gutter guard or something? <laughs> the screens over the gutters. Right. There we go. But golly, it's exciting. It's better. I mean, I am so excited about yeah. the duo of Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard. But, but mm -hmm. it's, the, it's, it's the tight ends. It's, I mean, but it's it, the screen Don't you game think a lot of it too is the offensive line? Because, oh, yeah. sure. because sure. here's Cushenberry, who's athletic. Obviously, Latham is athletic. Skaronsky is more athletic. Mm -hmm. Raidens is a is a pretty decent. Say, the right side of the line I mean, makes some Frer, I mean, these guys. Yes. It, it's a much better group athletically. Yeah. I mean, you That's probably have to go back five, six years, mm -hmm. maybe further. Yeah. And that makes a difference. It does. My What's surprise yours? was the Superdome. Five hundred and thirty-five million dollars. It looks so much better. Does it? Ready for Super Bowl 59. They're not quite done. Huh. Um, they didn't spend it in the press box. No. No. Nope. Rarely do they. No, rarely mm -hmm. do they. That is correct. Um, I think maybe they're going to do something to refresh the press box 
before the Super Bowl. I heard they're building more bathrooms. Well, the whole thing is much nicer. It is. I started going there 39 years ago, and it is so, and it was just 10 years old at the time. It, it is so much cleaner and sleeker, and you can already tell the technology's better. And they had to do it if they were going to get another Super Bowl. It had, it's, when they played this Super Bowl February 9th, it will have been 12 years since there was a Super Bowl. And the power went out. The power went out. You were there for that. I was there for that. Yeah, it was crazy. Which is probably one of the I main mean, reasons why, hey, listen, you're going to have to spend some money. Well, on that and thing. I also think, I mean, there were a lot of different reasons. There were a lot of weird kind of city structural things that were happening around that time. Like they were having some power issues across the city. Mm. Elect electric power, not like sure. political power. Um, they were having some just like city structure issues okay. and so some of that played into what happened that day i believe in that super bowl 12 years ago well they're, but they're, it was just really bad look all the way around oh, so they yeah. had to do something to well, fix it infrastructure wise after katrina they had to do some stuff i mean they had to invest some money mm -hmm. and they have and I, th I think it really looks nice and i'm excited about the 11th new orleans super bowl well that city had i mean the army corps of engineer crew rebuilt all those levees and that was a multi-year project sure. plus it's one of those weird places in geography where that city is sinking sure. every mm -hmm. year below sea level i think two to three inches a year is is what i've been told crazy that's yeah, really a strange. different locale but it looks great in there because you and I know the old Superdome where you had all the multicolored seats to make it look <laughs> like, like it was fully occupied even <laughs> when it wasn't, when the Saints were bad mm -hmm. and the Dome Patrol was trying to hold it down, you know, with mm -hmm. Sand Mills and those guys. But it's very sleek, very, it, it's really nice the way they've kind of upgraded all that inside. All right. Fourth down, who needs a good next seven days, Rep. Brian? Okay, so this is kind of an Amy Wells answer here. because <laughs> I, I don't have a particular person because I know we say, who are you watching over the next seven days? For me, it's who makes the final 53-man roster. The initial 53-man roster will be settled, but there's a final 53 in all of this. Uh, and, you know, there's one giant league-wide cut. Roughly 1,150 guys are looking for new employment. And, you know, Rand Carthon's always looking to churn the back end of this roster. But I, I just, I'm fascinated by what does the initial 53 look like? And for the most part, it'll be the same, but there'll be some spots where it'll probably be different. I took this question in a very different way. Okay. I interpreted it very different. Surprise, surprise. Given that we are now going into the regular season, what I took it as, and the person I wrote down was Tavondre Sweat, because I am excited about seeing what I can't help it that you took my thing. I wrote it on my paper. I'm well, I've excited. Done in the last two four Ds. Well, I mean, maybe you need to pick someone else. It's my turn. <laughs> I'm excited about seeing him transition from being the rookie who's trying to prove that he deserves to be here and, like, figure out how to do everything in the preseason to being a guy who is relied upon on Sundays and actually be playing big boy football with other big players. He has never played with Jeffrey Simmons. He hasn't played That's with true. Harold Landry. He has, I mean, he is about to transition from being the new kid who we're all impressed that he's doing a good job to the kid who needs to show up or we're going to lose a ball game. And that's two different kind of chapters of your career. And watching him kind of go over the bridge from one to the other, it's going to be a different couple of weeks for him. And I think he has the ability to do it. We've seen it mm -hmm. in training camp. We've seen that he has the maturity. We've seen that he has the work ethic. We've seen that he has just massive amounts of talent and just strength and skill. But does he have those other things? Does he have the ability to really lock in and do this NFL thing? Does he have the ability to keep up with what's about to start so happening? So you're taking what I said earlier and you're taking it up another level. I'm taking it up another level. Because I said... You were impressed by this. I was I'm impressed at by that. his training camp slash preseason. Yeah. And I think he's given himself the best chance he can to be successful in the regular season. 
Now you want to see him do it. I want to see what actually happens in the next week and week after that and week after that. That's what I'm looking for. So you're going to take that one for every one? <laughs> I mean, well, infinity. what I plan to do going forward is just flat out copy whatever answer you wow. give. I'm just going to repeat it back to you going <laughs> forward. It feels like less prep on my part. It, and people might enjoy it. I, I would think that'd be well played. Yeah, that was I've my plan. I've often challenged people. I said it would be tremendous if you did an interview with someone <laughs> and you just kept asking them the exact same question <laughs> over, over and over. over just to see what they would do. <laughs> so that would be along mm -hmm. the same lines. Yeah. Uh, mine's Josh Wiley. Tight yeah. end needs to keep getting better from the concussion. Mm -hmm. The Titans need him in Chicago. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Got to get back on the field, 81. Uh, really good offseason. Really good training yeah. camp. Really good player who makes this offense better. A, a guy that I think could could take that year one to year two jump and, and be significant, uh, a significant factor in the offense. And so for me, it's Josh Wiley. Just keep getting better. That was a little more. I mean, yours was a little more like Hup 2. There you go. Yeah. Hey, Titans fans, Hup 2. <laughs> SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations, whether you're buying or selling football tickets. SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, Eureka, a ticket that works. Expect the expected. SeatGeek. SeatGeek. Before we let you go on this edition of the OTP 4D, a bonus, Amy Wells and I had a chance to visit with NFL Network's Ian Rappaport when he was in town for a Titans practice earlier in August. Here is that interview with Ian Rappaport on the OTP. Ian Rappaport, NFL Network, joins us in the BetMGM studio. He is in the Snickers hot seat today. I love Snickers, actually. You can have one if you do a it good really job. It really satisfies. I, I, can't, I can't have one because it'll melt because it's so hot, but what I do is I will take Snickers, I put it in my refrigerator or freezer, and Isn't I eat them like that. Isn't that the best? Really the best. We've got to start with the hard-hitting questions. Okay. You do this during training camp. You're kind of all over the place. The, the world tour for mm -hmm. Ian Rappaport. How many NFL Network branded shirts do you own? Uh, I own probably about 30 or 35. Um, That's different, a whole month. Different brands because there's been different brands throughout the years. <laughs> this year we have Antigua, so that's only what I'm wearing. Um, but every year they send me like six and I collect them. And so I just have so many of them. But you need them because I have eight with me right now. Um, I've been on the road. It's going to be ended up be like 15 days or 16 days straight. So you do laundry once. I did laundry in an loft hotel in... Honestly, I can't remember where. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah that sounds about right. Coin-operated laundry, and mm -hmm. get it all set, and then ready to roll. Old nice. school. All right, who's going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers starting quarterback? Um, you know, I will take the words of Mike Tomlin and um, basically assume that it'll be Russell Wilson. As he said, Russell Wilson in pole position is how he has termed it. Justin Fields has had a really good camp, and Justin Fields is talented. He is ex incredibly smart. He is perfect for that system that – your good friend Arthur Smith is going to run. And, you know, the the comparison to me was like, it's just like Ryan Tannehill, really good athlete, needs a career reboot, hasn't found the right system, needs a strong running game, which Ryan had and which they have, except Fields is more athletic. So to me, like, that actually, you know, eventually could Justin Fields be the starting quarterback? I could see it 100%. I just don't know that it'll be week one. Why did the Miami Dolphins give Tyreek Hill a contract adjustment? Um, because he is a great player. Um, now, the actual adjustment, as far as just pure overall dollars, like he was on the books for $88 million. So they gave him – but it, the last year was just like a big balloon year. So they kind of smoothed it out. They gave him the money that he was already owed. They made it make sense to them cap-wise, and they guaranteed basically two years of it. Now, are the Dolphins going to cut Tyreek Hill within the next two years? I'm going to go ahead and say no. So I think it made him feel good. It made the cash a little more palatable for them and for him. And it kind of ended a situation which can be ugly. We've seen a lot of contractual situations around the league. Um, this one they handled well, and they happened they, to do it the day after he was named the best player on the NFL Top 100. So uh, I think everyone was probably happy with that outcome. We've been talking a lot about the kickoff rule. Do we think that this new rule is going to last beyond the 2024 season? Um. I 
don't know if this exact particular rule is going to last. Um, I think the idea is going to last, right? Like now there are tweaks. You can say maybe the ball goes to 35 instead of the 30 or, you know, whatever, vice versa, whatever it is. Um, you can have the players line up differently. Like there's different ways you can kind of tinker, but it seems to be a really good idea. And I really like special teams. I really like punt returns and kickoff returns. It has been generally annoying as someone who loves football that you kick the ball, the returner goes like this, and everyone just goes in lines like there's been no returns. The last two years, it's none. Um, I'm excited for it to be back, and it's a really clever way to simulate the action while not simulating the concussions. I just, it's so, it took a really out of the box thinking, you know, basically like XFL, UFL, per, like really smart. Um, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I just don't know if like, because they open the door to kind of tinker now, they can keep tinkering if they want. You know what I mean? Right. The Titans open with the Chicago Bears. How good are the Chicago Bears going to be in 2024? They should be better. Um, you know, Caleb Williams, I think, is everything that they want. Um, mentally, he's great. Obviously, physically and athletically, he's awesome. I mean, he's, he looks like a number one pick. Um, the actual roster, it, it honestly kind of reminds me of this roster. Um, because if you wanted to say, like, let's say Will Levis was a rookie, right? Not like he played a ton of snaps last year, but let's say he was a rookie. This would be a great situation for a rookie because you have an offensive line that's getting rebuilt but has a lot of talented people. You have weapons on offense all around. You have a couple good runners, and you have a defense that could be really feisty. Like, that's basically the same there. It's just Caleb is a rookie, so you got to kind of drop him in there. But it's a great situation for any rookie because he doesn't have to go through playing for a terrible team because the, of the trade, because they had the pick because of the Panthers pick. It's just incredible. Now, like, might he start slow because he is a rookie? Possible. And I'm fully ready for the whole world to freak out if the Bears are, like, 3-5 and five and he's been up and down like he's a rookie. That's what it is. But uh, I do think they'll be a lot better. Of the two Los Angeles teams, which one has the better season in 2024? You know, it's hard. I would say mm, that's really tough. To me, probably the Chargers, although um, Justin Herbert's foot, plantar fascia situation bears watching, only because sometimes when you have a really good, well-made roster and you have a new coach come in, sometimes you get a bounce. I will say this about the Rams, though. I knew for sure last year they were going to be really bad and would probably be picking high and might take a quarterback. Instead, they were not bad at all. They were unbelievably well coached, and Stafford played great. So because the Rams are so well coached and because Les Snead does a great job in finding players in places where other people don't, fifth round, sixth round, fourth round, whatever, the Rams could be a lot better than we think because the Rams always seem to be better than we think. How can you explain Patrick Mahomes being number four on the NFL's new top 100 Great behind question. Christian McCaffrey, Lamar Jackson, and Tyreek Hill? Great question. Um, people have opinions, and players' opinions are different. Um, and I will say this. Seeing Tyreek Hill get number one was cool because for so many guys around the NFL, like he is really that dude. Like He is the guy they, like, they love to watch. The problem with Mahomes is that he was really good when he started in his second year. He was really good after that, and then he still was really good, and then his team started going to Super Bowls, and they win, and so they're also really good. So at some point, it's like Mahomes could win the MVP every year. And we see it in other sports too. Like so at it's some the point, Jordan factor. Yeah, at some point it's like people get a little tired, and you go, well, he needs to be – you know, a little more to get number one. It's like, well, he, he's kind of already number one, and he still is. Like, he hasn't gotten worse. It's just, you know, a little, a little fatigue. Who is your favorite for rookie of the year this year? Um, I, I, what I will answer is um, which rookie I'm most excited about. And I would say, you know, the quarterbacks are all – I'm excited for all of them. But I would say Malik Neighbors. Um with the Giants. With the Giants. He is electric. He is, he's got a lot of juice. Um, he is someone that was so needed there. You know, he is a pure number one receiver. He is a dog. Um, could have been the first receiver taken. To me, and, and I think for Daniel Jones, who has a rebuilt offensive line that should be a lot better, um, he was someone that's essential. So I'm looking to him. Um, no offense to J.C. Latham. 
Um, I'm sure he's going to have an excellent. Sounds like he's been great so far. Um, but left tackles don't generally win rookie of the year, so I'll go with neighbors. Who's going to be the most improved team in the NFL in 2024? I mean, one of them we hit on the Bears. I think would be you know a team that would that would make a lot of sense. Um, Chargers would be another one. You know, new coaching staff. You kind of get that 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 bounce a little bit. Um, Titans could be in the mix too. You know, I mean, it was such a busy off season, such a high volume, highly targeted, big money off season with a quarterback who, like, you know, for for Will Levis, he could either be kind of like pretty good starter, you know, right in the middle, you know, probably lead teams to the playoffs and and good, but he is really talented enough to be better than that. Like, he is really talented. And if he went in the draft this year instead of last year, my guess is he's a top 10 pick. So some of it will be like, how good does Will Levis want to be and how good does he end up being? Um, but this team should be very much improved too, I should say. You mentioned the draft. Who do you think is the odds-on favorite to have the number one pick in the 2025 NFL draft? This is always the toughest. I'm terrible at it. Um, I, I can't really answer that because the only way you're that bad is if you lose your quarterback and then sometimes lose your other quarterback. So – it's going to be someone that we don't expect because I here's the problem with training camp is like I go around, I talk to these teams, talk to the coaches, general manager, and everyone. Everyone's so excited. Everyone's going to be a lot better. But sometimes they're not a lot better. No. No. Um, and sometimes guys get hurt and it ruins everything or sometimes coaches get fired. Like it's So um, I have a group of friends that we will, on a group chat, pick a team, each pick a team every year. Um, we have not done it yet, so I will study up and we'll figure it out. What are your top storylines surrounding the 2024 Tennessee Titans? Um, I mean, one of them we talked about is how good is Will, how good is Will Levis? Um, he's got a good supporting cast. It seems like, I mean, we can talk about J.C. Latham, who is super talented, and it sounds like, um, you know, the offensive line, Skaronski, is going to be a lot better. And it sounds like he's a little bit bigger, which I think will help. So we can talk about all that. To me... Cushionberry was probably the best, biggest, most important signing of the whole offseason. He is awesome. He's going to help everyone. He is going to make Will Levis better. Um, so how good is, is Will Levis? I think that is, that is a, a big one. Um, and then, you know, this should be a really good draft class, I think. I mean, I think Sweat is going to be maybe excellent, like, like really, truly excellent. Um, so how much do some of these rookies contribute um, and how much of a kind of like juice does that give the roster? And then, you know, I think for Callahan, you know, look, it's Mike Vrabel won a lot of games here, went deep into the playoffs, did a lot of great things. It did feel like change was necessary. Feels like Callie is a breath of fresh air. And for people who know him well, like he is a good dude. Like he really is. And I think that will help as well. Ian Rappaport, you're a busy man, so we know we have to let you go. But before you run out of here, okay. you have a YouTube channel. I do. And I would like to know what people are getting when they subscribe to Ian Rappaport's YouTube channel. I appreciate you saying that. I do a lot of things, right? I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm now on TikTok. Um, YouTube feels a little different. It, I think it's an opportunity for me to give people a little behind-the-scenes look at what my life is like. So on the road, it's been hard because I'm always run all over the place and crazy, but it should be a place where you get all the good videos and analysis and breaking news and whatever, but then a little more of like, here's how this happened. Here's how that happened. This trade went down. Like, what went into it? Like, all those kind of behind-the-scenes things. That's what you should be getting. Do you share your favorite places to eat in different spots? And I, I, things? Will, I will do stuff like that, yeah, because um, I'm, I'm a big foodie. Will there be a lot on horse racing there? There'll be some on horse racing, yeah. Uh, my other my other hobby. We had a horse, our Philly Parnak, uh, had a great run, finished second in a big race. Yeah, hopefully people get it all there. Always good to have Ian Rappaport join us. Very mm -hmm. kind. Yeah. He only looked at his phone five, six, ten 25 times. times. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. I, I mean, his phone was going off the entire interview. It is wild. How do you live like that? Seriously, I mean, how do you, could you do that? Oh, gosh. I think you have, you have to be somebody that is wired that way and embraces that. But I think even for that person, it's probably way more than it I should remember be. When I remember when I was covering Tennessee and... Um, recruiting, recruiting, well, recruiting. Well, but I mean everything. My phone rang all the time. Mm -hmm. But that was a phone in your office. Yeah. That was... A, you could that, walk away from well, it. Well, I did. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd walk into another room and you could, you know, whatever... But now with cell phones, his 
goes off 10 times as much as my, I mean, it used to drive me crazy. People had my home number and they would call at all hours of the night, you know, because you're looking to get a tip on anything. I was doing one team. He's doing 32 teams. Yeah. And then he's also covering the, the, the NFL itself, you know, what policies are coming out. And he's talking to agents and players themselves and former players and broadcasters. And I, I don't see how you do that. I, I can't handle an overzealous group chat, let alone <laughs> the amount of just <laughs> notifications he's getting. Like, I, I cannot fathom the just amount of stimulus that's coming to your brain all the time. And you sure can't sync it up with any other devices that you have. Like if your phone rings and your watch beeps and your computer starts dinging and all of that happens at the same time, I'd, ha I'd have to live in the woods. Well, like know, there's no way. Part of what he has done at different points is doing interviews like on radio stations. He has had to hang up in the middle of interviews. Mm -hmm to take a call towards a story. Yep. Oh, yeah, so, frequently. So yes. there was a radio, one guy at a radio station was particularly upset and <laughs> called for him to be basically flogged um, <laughs> for, because he, he and they he worked rude. it out. It I turned out like, to for be giving you time. That he was a good sport I about mean, it. Ian was a really good sport about the whole thing, but he, you know, he's like, my number one job is NFL Network. I'm covering the NFL mm. and, I, th I thought during the course of our interview, he might have to cut it off at one mm -hmm. point. Um, but he really, I mean, that's why he's so good. He and Adam Schefter are both the same way. And, and then you look at Adrian Wojciechowski and guys like that who you covered in the NBA and then the guys who covered the Major League Baseball and, oh gosh, I don't, I just don't. It's crazy. It is crazy. I yeah. can keep one team straight. I could never keep 32 <laughs> in my brain. There's Same. too many people. Same. Too Can I many. do uh, a public service announcement for the OTP? Please. Because sure. let me say this. Uh, if you have not subscribed to wherever you get your podcasts or on the YouTube TV channel that the Titans have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. The OTP y'all did with Jelly Roll. Oh. Fantastic. Sweet. Thank you. Um, really cool to have him in here. Um, like us around here, we we know I, I know him as Jason D. Ford from Antioch, Tennessee. Like I, Jelly Roll has been, a, but I mean he is a major big deal and is actually he's doing some great work. It's I think it's cool that he's a Titans mega mega Titans fan. Uh, but you need to go back. If you have not listened or watched that one, you're missing out. And if you're not doing it anyway and subscribing to the OTP, you're missing out. End of, end of my TED Talk. Oh, Rhett, that Thanks, was a Rhett. great TED Talk. Very thoughtful. No, it was awesome, y'all. I mean, Thank he you. was great. He was great. Y'all have done some really good ones, and that was a really good one. Well, that was one. a big thrill yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. It was really nice sure. to have him on. And, uh, you know, I don't know him, know him. I've, I've gotten to do a couple things with him. But, I mean, I think for a lot of us, to see a local guy overcome what he's overcome and still keep fighting to do all the right things. I mean, it's you, you're pulling for that guy. And, man, he's a talent. I mean, yeah. his oh, music yeah. is awesome. outstanding. He's really – and there's a couple things. I, I Again, I don't know him, but there does not appear to be anything – Disingenuous. It, there's, there's a, it, he is a genuine person. I think that's he right. Really, I yeah. think I mean, what that, you see. Amy didn't talk mm -hmm. to him for 20 minutes because yeah. he had to wait. So he did the OTP and he had to wait here before they took him mm -hmm. downstairs to do the team meeting. And they intentionally waited because, I mean, if there were people lingering, you're not going to not notice Jelly Roll. Right. Right. I mean, if yeah. somebody's going in to get a cup of coffee or a banana in the kitchen or something. They'll see him. Yeah, it's like, yeah. wait a minute. That's uh, yeah. so. So he held right in here and yeah. Amy talked to him. For, you talked to him yeah. for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. What yeah. are you guys talking I'm, about? I mean, just kind of everything and nothing. I mean, what he had going on. We talked about family stuff. We talked about, I mean, but it was just the nicest conversation like you're just talking to a buddy you've known forever. You know, he was just kind. He's not pretentious. No, no. he's not pretentious. He, we were talking about touring and asking different questions about like the logistics of that. And Yeah, because he's mean, doing a 
56 city yeah. stadium. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's a mega deal. And yeah. just talking it's about be that the kind biggest of stuff. tour of the year. But yeah. yet he's still that guy from Antioch, Tennessee. That's the thing yeah. I think that mm-hmm. is so endearing about him is that he is such a genuine person. Yeah. And you're right. He's not pretentious at all. Well, thanks for mentioning. He's yeah. never forgotten. Nice. I mean, the story he talked about, I saw the Music City Miracle and if you know his story, yeah, I mean, he spent some time in the juvenile, juvenile justice center right there outside of the north end zone the of jump, Nissan He Stadium. watched he it on, on the, the jumbotron, jumbotron from his cell. But uh-huh. he's never forgotten. And he talks about the mistakes yeah. that he made. Yeah, and he, and, and from what I understand, he's really good to that place because mm-hmm. of the, the the time he spent inside those walls. There's there's I think there's a production booth in there where the guys can. Uh, you know, take advantage of that and try their hand at recording things. Like he, he does a lot that nobody ever talks about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're really fans. Cool. I mean, huge I think it's, fans. Yes. I think it's safe huge to say. Huge yes. fans. Here at, at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, we are all fans, and the players were thrilled. Players went they crazy. They were Padre Swift. I knew that it. That was fantastic. But the, whole, but the whole thing, all those guys mm-hmm. were just so pumped. Yeah. To see him in there, and what a great moment for them at the end of camp. Because, you know, you've been in those meetings, and you're going mm-hmm. into the third preseason game. And, and I'm not saying the coaches don't hold their interest and in that Brian Kelly, but, I mean, you do anything for five weeks, and yeah. it's starting to get a little... Dog mm, daisy, little, yeah. And there's not a real opponent to get ready for, like for Chicago. And suddenly... Here, here walks in one of the biggest stars in the world right now. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they were pumped. And then to see Tavondre. <laughs> I knew it. And what was crazy about the Tavondre thing was well, that. Well, you told him about Tavondre. I told him about that Tavondre was going to be excited, but only because he brought it up. Because he, he watches the OTP. watches the OTP and had mentioned what a good interview that was with him. And he mentioned yes. it in Jim White's story, too. And that he, yeah. And that he enjoyed watching that, and he was so excited about him as a player. Yes, young people. I, I mean, cool people <laughs> listen to this podcast. Cool like, people. y'all have to know. But You it, have to know. That's but, what I'm saying. If you're not subscribing, you are missing out. And you're not cool. For Rhett Bryan and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for joining us for another Jelly Roll-approved edition <laughs> of the OTP.